I would like to welcome all graduating students, their families, distinguished guests, friends, faculty, and staff to our departmental graduation ceremony. My name is Kathy Clark as chair of the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. It's my pleasure to preside over this event. It's a great day to celebrate the accomplishments of the chemistry and biochemistry graduating class of 2018. So before we begin, I would like to introduce our distinguished guests who are present with us today. They are alumnus Dr. Harlan Amstutz, who we will be hearing a lot about in a few more minutes, his wife Patty Amstutz, their grandson Stephen Hodge, Haley Ellison, Jovita Ortega is a longtime administrator for Dr. Amstutz, and her daughter Sydney. I would like to thank all of you for attending today's event. And also with us today is Dean Miguel Garcia Garbay, Dean of the Division of Physical Sciences at the UCLA College. The official conferring of degrees in the graduate division and college took place on Thursday and Friday. Today is our special opportunity to bring together those of us in the UCLA community who are associated with the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry and to acknowledge the accomplishments of our graduating Bachelor of Science, Master of Science, and Doctor of Philosophy candidates. As chair of this department, I congratulate you on joining a distinguished family of alumni. We hope you will consider, continue to consider UCLA and our department your home away from home. We will be proud to count you as a chemistry and biochemistry UCLA Bruin for life. I also congratulate your families, the parents, grandparents, spouses, partners, sisters, brothers, daughters, sons, and other family members who have stood by you and supported you through the highs and lows of your studies. Let's give them a big round of applause. The program for our graduation ceremony is as follows. We will begin with the presentation of the annual alumni award and the commencement address by Dr. Harlan Amstutz. We will then confer graduate awards and then honor PhD and master's candidates. After that, we will award the undergraduate prizes and honors, and finally, we will recognize each of the bachelor candidates. At this point, I would like to welcome Dean Miguel Garcia Garibay to the stage to present the 2018 Chemistry and Biochemistry Alumni Award. <clears throat> Thank you, Kathy. Well, thank you all for joining us today for the Chemistry and Biochemistry Commencement Ceremony. I am Miguel Garcia Garibay. I'm the Dean of the Division of Physical Sciences. But more importantly, I am, I am a member of this department. I am a faculty of this department, and this is really my home. And it's really nice to be back and, and see all of our really outstanding students getting ready to go on to their lives and their future. Um, the, the, the department started the Chemistry and Biochemistry Alumni Award in 2012 to recognize the remarkable contributions of, of their alumni, the contributions that they made both to society and to science. You can imagine that with such a great history of distinguished alumni, there are many individuals who are deserving of this award, which makes the selection process all the more difficult. It is my great honor to present the 2018 Chemistry and Biochemistry Alumni Award to Dr. Harlan Amstutz. Before I tell you a little bit more about Dr. Amstutz, I am delighted to welcome his wife, Patty Amstutz, who is also a fellow Bruin. She received her Bachelor's of Arts in English and International Relations. Thank you, Patty, for your attendance. Dr. Amstutz received his Bachelor's of Arts degree in Chemistry from UCLA in 1953, earning Phi Beta Kappa honors. He was a standard athlete, played on the UCLA volleyball team, and he also played basketball for coach John Wooden. <laughs> after, receive, after receiving his Bachelor's degree, 
he decided to attend the UCLA School of Medicine. Once there, he had the opportunity to work on one of the very first heart bypass machines and became fascinated with the research that had proven to be his life puzzle. After receiving his medical degree, Dr. Amstutz trained to be an orthopedic surgeon uh, at the Hospital for Special Surgery in New York. And then she served for two years in the Air Force as captain at the Hospital of Mino Air Force Base. After a National Institute of Health sponsored fellowship at the Royal National Orthopedic Hospital in London, he returned to the hospital for, a special, uh, for a special surgery. His first appointment focused on length lengthening procedures, but he immediately began pe petitioning for projects regarding the hip and knee. He established one of the first bioengineering laboratories and recruited additional expertise, which led not only to the first total hip replacement in the United States, but also the design and manufacture of the prosthesis. prosthesis. Subsequently, this led to the hip re resurfacing procedure. Dr. Amstutz is currently the founding director of the Joint Replacement Institute at St. Vincent Medical Center in Los Angeles. Dr. Amstutz was named Outstanding Alumnus by the Hospital for Special Surgery in 2010. He is an honorary member of the German Orthopedic Society, as well as one of the few foreign orthopedists to be named a member of the Royal College of Surgeons of England. Past president of numerous societies, he has over 350 scientific papers published, and he is the author of two books. It is now my pleasure to invite Dr. Harlan Amstutz up to the podium to accept this award and present the commencement address. Please join me welcome Dr. Amstutz. Thank you very much, um, Dean Garcia Garbay, and, and, uh, and uh, for those wonderful words. My heartiest congratulations go to the UCLA chemistry graduates of 2018, and to the incredible faculty here present that facilitated your matriculation. Additional kudos are due to your parents, family, friends, and others in your support group. It is truly my honor to be selected to share this day with you, your family and friends. First, I ask myself, why me? Well, I guess one might say that I am a survivor, and I've had some success, plus I was a chemistry major here at UCLA. Chemistry, as you all appreciate, is the foundation for just about everything in the physical and biological sciences. Thus, we have been fortunate in our choice of study. Like many of you, I was stimulated by, initially by a wonderful high school teacher named Bessie Bush, Butcher at John Marshall High School here in Los Angeles. It was the way she presented the interesting subject matter that is chemistry, that succeeded in getting me involved with it. I remember the experiments that we regularly perform to this day that made me anxiously look forward to the next class and the next experimental challenge. As a teacher, Bessie was sort of a mini forerunner of your widely acclaimed Neil Gregg and his bacon. Although I didn't follow her college choice of for me, Caltech, uh, because as you heard, I wanted to play basketball for this new coach, John Wooden. When I arrived here at UCLA in 1949, there were but seven major buildings, including Royce Kirchhoff, two gyms, and a cluster of Quonset huts. And I'm thinking about 8,000 students. Though smallish in comparison to today's size, the faculty in chemistry was superb. The remarkable 
expansion of this great university was just beginning to shift from its early sterling reputation in the liberal arts to foster the scientific arena. Both areas now claim significant accomplishments and prestige. Along the way to this juncture, you have accumulated significant learning, which I suspect each of you is already turning into useful knowledge for the future. Tomorrow will be the first day of the rest of your life. Who knew for certain when you had that stroll down Bruin Walk, when you began your UCLA career, would arrive at this day, now filled with your experiences at UCLA, and that's the foundation for your future plus the basis for it, as it was for me, many fond memories. May that journey be productive, successful, and most importantly, fulfill your dreams. I certainly hope that the latter remains your focus. I know something of your very direction and future plans. Good luck to all, and special kudos to those who will pursue careers in education. For education and its harvest is the hope of the world's future. For those seeking a gap year, or for whatever time it takes to find your future, I think at this time you can at least make a list of those things that you do not want to do. When the light bulb turns on, go for it full bore. Sarcophilus assured us that seeking more wisdom is going to be a big start part of your time. He believed wisdom is the chief element of happiness. And after all, we chemists deal in elements. There are those in our society and world who believe that success is mirrored in financial remuneration. But I can assure you from my observations and those of multiple others, including the Romans, that money is the root of all evil. I will not contradict its advantages, but in a sense it can be the devil incarnate and more often than not does not lead to ultimate worth, satisfaction, or happiness. No question that appropriate reward in the form of compensation for specific achievements is justified. And while initially satisfying, the ultimate satisfaction so often espoused by poets, sages, and song is doing something special for your family fellow men and society. The great and curious truth of the human experience is that selflessness is the best thing you can do for yourself. As I have already hinted, at the top of my list of most worthy accomplishments are education and scientific discovery. If you happen to be able to do both, that is a truly the icing on the cake. I was incredibly lucky to be at the forefront of joint, re joint replacement an NIH fellowship in England triggered my future special interest in that arena and in HIPS. Although initially in London, I was focused on congenital anomalies, the subject of my first publications. The fellowship enabled me to visit prominent centers in England and Europe where hip replacement was in its infancy. I next joined the faculty at Hospital for Special Surgery, where earlier I had trained to become an orthopedic surgeon and quickly realized that the surgeon in chief initially thought many of my ideas a bit far-fetched. I wanted to set up a biomechanics lab to test in vitro materials and early designs of hip and knee replacements, which were emanating from England and Europe, none of which had regard or a following in North America. To get up to speed in engineering and biomaterials, my education began in earnest with several collaborating institutions in New York but as well with NASA. And I subsequently hired my first PhD trained mechanical engineer for an orthopedic department. This collaboration led to the first successful US-made hip replacement. When I became chairman at UCLA in 1970, I was able to increase our engineering expertise in our lab to four PhDs, therefore, therefore continuing my education and a basic science research program that led to new designs and considerable progress to this day, as well as foster the education of students, residents, and fellows in training. But let's get back to your own future career paths and, and more on the secrets of success and happiness. 
With your chemistry background, there are so many super specialty fields that have developed or are in the developing stage that it's truly fascinating to contemplate them. Of course, those of you who are receiving a PhD are well on your way and perhaps heading in a new or revisited area. As I reviewed many of your bios, I was amazed at your choices as exemplified by special interests in the faculty in biochem, molecular biology, structural and computational biology, systems biology, biological regulation mechanism, bioenergy and environment, metabolism, and not last or least, aging. Now, at nearly four score and seven years of age, and with a goodly number of body parts out of warranty, aging research sounds mighty catchy. All I know is that famous Spanish explorer, Ponce de Leon, failed to find the fountain of youth. So just maybe with CRISPR and the ability to slice and dice the genome, you can find it. To pursue new and different opportunities takes passion, courage, and considerable patience. The road is rarely smooth, and even with great career success, there are likely to be setbacks. I have had a few. I had the pleasure of leading a fledging division of orthopedics here at UCLA beginning in 1970 to 1989, and facilitate growth of a faculty of one to 15, covering all developing super specialty areas, a vigorous multifaceted research program, and a resident training program ranked number five nationally. However, with growth came the need for more space and operating time for my faculty and students. To improve my position to achieve in these areas, I applied for departmental status. But my tenacious produce caused me ultimately to be relieved of my administrative duties by the surgeon department chair and the dean. I was initially devastated but as it turned out, this was one of the best things that could have happened because there followed an invitation for me to establish a world-class joint replacement institute at Orthopedic Hospital, resulting in my most productive research with further development of new bearing materials and a new design for a metal-on-metal -metal hip resurfacing for arthritic hips, a project that I had initiated in 1973 here at UCLA with a metal plastic bearing. The story goes on, but I will desist unless you ask me for further chapters. To pursue your dreams and weather the storms, I strongly advise you to seek out the best possible advice. As an example, after completing my orthopedic residency in New York, I was sent to Minot, North Dakota to become the orthopedist for the Air Force, an obligation which I readily accepted because I was received a draft deployment to complete my residency training in a period between the Korean and Vietnam Wars when all doctors were drafted. In Minot, I was responsible for the orthopedic care of approximately 9,000 military and their families, all of the veterans of Central and Western North Dakota and Western Montana, as well as two large Indian reservations. It wasn't very long before I was confronted with a problem, the first of many which I had no idea how to handle. The only civilian orthopedist in town who was a consultant, but was not a lot of help. His answer was simply to send the patient, as he did, to the Mayo's, better known as the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota. This was not feasible for me. My solution was to do some research, find the, the authority on the subject, wherever they were in the US or Canada, call them, explain and get their advice. This method was supremely successful and many of those experts became my good friends when I eventually met them later in my academic career. Do not be bashful and seek out the best person to advise you and I expect you too will be as successful as I have been in this regard. And remember, as many of you heard recently at the dinner honoring the donors of the new chairs in chemistry, to think outside the box and credit your imagination. Now, all, now you all recognize that there is more than just a little bit of trouble in this world. 
and rather a sad, sad that news from Washington is so depressing and hard to believe. I have always been a the glass is half full guy, but recognize that effective change to protect our planet and making education and research for the highest priority will not be easy. But that anything worthwhile that moves the needle in the right direction has never been easy. I'm a lover of music of all types. My wife answered, when I asked what kind of music you like, she says, good music. Today, I want to highly recommend Harry Chapin's gold medal collection, which contains 32 of his greatest songs from the 70s and early late 60s. In a brilliant but all too short career, dying in an auto accident at the age of 38. He was an activist, and the words of his songs are inspiring and magical, as well as musically delightful. He was posthumously awarded the Congressional Gold Medal for his role in social issues and instigating the World Hunger Fund. The importance of activism and awareness cannot be underestimated. Again, my heartiest congratulations to the UCLA chemistry graduates of 2018 and to the, sorry. It's very interesting. Numbers don't lie. Forgive this discretion to more the North Campus thought, but I thought to broaden your perspectives, as I have recently done by reading some of the nonfiction of those who have taken courageous paths. Stephen Ambrose's expose on Lewis and Clark's Northwest Passage, or the inspirational boys in the boat regarding the crew, unlikely winners, or more California-like Barbaria days, the surfer's life a book that especially appeared to me as a sadly retired surfer. It is my heartiest pleasure again to congratulate you for what you've already accomplished. You have had the pleasure of completing a t the task at one of the world's great universities. And oh, by the way, please occasionally turn off those wonderfully addicting electronic devices. Look up, make eye contact, listen to the birds sing, and smell the flowers. And my best advice of all was recently captured in the words I heard sung by Audra McDonald. Search high and low, follow every byway, every path you know, climb every mountain, cross every stream, follow every rainbow until you find your dream. And now, let's party. Thank you.